Did you know that at least 10% of the world's population suffer with chronic pain? That's around 60 million people, with some countries reporting the prevalence of chronic pain to be as high as 25%. Now, pain isn't just a physical ailment. It can make your life a misery. Did you know that 8 out of 10 patients with chronic pain have depression? And a quarter of people with chronic pain have a sleep disorder. Given that we know how important sleep is for health and well-being, it's something that can have such a far-reaching effect on our life. Let's talk about my three favourite herbs for pain relief. Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tuttick, your medical herbalist and high-performance coach. So hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul-centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So hey, let's get started, shall we? Constantly being in pain is an insidious thing. It's not just the pain. It's how that pain affects your life. Research has reported a strong correlation between chronic pain and anxiety and depression. It can also knock your confidence and it may cause you to adapt by doing less, often becoming more isolated as a result. Pain relieving medications, while at times necessary, can come with a variety of side effects. Today, we're talking about three commonly available herbs which are backed by research and clinical observation in relation to their use in pain management. I'd strongly encourage you to not only think about these herbs as options for managing your pain, but also to speak with your herbalist in relation to how these herbs can be used to support your current pain management protocols. You see, Some herbs increase the action of medications and in the hands of a skilled practitioner you may find a combination where the herb improves the ability of your medications to do their job and as a result you're able to take a lower dose of your medication and this can produce the possibility of side effects. Now just like your pain medication it's important to understand what type of pain you're dealing with. Is it short term, otherwise known as an acute injury from overuse, for example? If that's the case, then you'll want to manage the pain so that you're still aware of it, but it's not too much to handle. If, for example, you overdid it at the gym, then this helps you to avoid re-injury by getting back to the gym too quickly. If you've lived with your pain for three months or more, then we're talking about chronic pain. And it might be constant or it might come and go. And this type of pain needs to be managed alongside your recovery protocol. The other aspect that we need to understand is what sort of pain is it? Are we looking at nerve pain, muscle pain, or skeletal or bone pain? For our three herbs today, we're keeping our conversation within the grouping of body pain rather than emotional pain, for example. So musculoskeletal or nerve pain is what we're talking about. And you can have more than one. First up is the chili pepper and the phytochemical or plant chemical that gives chili its famous pungent heat is capsaicin. Capsaicin activates sensory nerve fibers that allow you to notice chili's pungent heat. One of the neurotransmitters that gets released when these sensory nerve fibers get activated is called substance P. Why are we so interested in substance P? Well, it's a neurotransmitter which signals that we're in pain when it binds with its main receptor, neurokinin 1 or NK1. So in simple terms, if we have less substance P available or if our NK1 receptor is offline, it's busy doing other things or there aren't many of them, then our pain reduces. Now before I give substance P a bad rap, This neurotransmitter does other important things too. It's involved in wound healing and the immune response. So it's not about eradicating it. It's about getting the balance right. How do you get your chili in? Well, if you can tolerate it, it's a great addition to your diet. You can also take it as a tablet or as an oil or cream. 
Don't give it to children or apply it to wounds. Now, if you're using it as an oil, a powder or a cream topically, do a patch test first. And because it's extremely heating, don't apply it with heat, like a wet bag or a hot water bottle, for example, or after a hot shower. Capsaicin can irritate your stomach, so use it with caution if you have heartburn or ulcers. And it can also interact with ACE inhibitors and drugs that reduce your stomach acid and also blood thinning medications or herbs. My next herb is one that you've already heard me talk about. You know I love this one. We've talked about it in relation to boosting immunity. And that's ginger, or Zingiba officinalis. Now for the pain relieving aspect of ginger, we're interested in a phytochemical that's called the ginger rolls. It's most commonly associated with its ability to stop you vomiting, but one of the ways that ginger rolls do this is by reducing the activity of, wait for it, substance P and its receptor NK1. So how do I like to take my ginger? Well, it's best as a fresh root in your diet. You can add it to food, salad dressings, or take it as a tea. I blitz my fresh ginger root in the Nutribullet and then I top it up with boiling water. Or I make a whole bunch of extra ones and make them into ice cubes to keep in the freezer. And then you just add boiling water, voila, you've got instant fresh ginger root tea. It can also be prescribed as a tablet. It can be added to your creams and your ointments as an essential oil or a tincture. A tincture is when a herb is soaked in a combination of alcohol and water. The phytochemicals move from the herb into the liquid and then the physical plant is discarded. Now my final herb is for anybody who has had a toothache and is waiting for an appointment with their dentist. It's clove or shishigium aromaticum. Its anaesthetic qualities are due to the phytochemical eugenol. But clove oil is also antifungal and antimicrobial, so it's a useful ally when you're waiting for the dentist. Clove is the over-the-counter herb that I really love when you're dealing with nerve pain. But clove oil can irritate surfaces and it can be toxic over the long term. So for this reason, it's not one for the children and it should only be used for short-term pain relief. My favourite way of taking it is a tea or a gargle, or by chewing the dried clove. If you're taking it as a tea, you can swish it around your mouth and swallow it. And this is particularly helpful in dealing with toothache. So being in pain can be a soul-sapping experience. It affects us on so many levels. If you're in pain, please know that you don't have to stoically bear it on your own. There are a broad range of options, herbal, nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, acupuncture, mind-based therapies, to name just a few. It takes time to find the right combination, the one that works best for you, and that can be the hardest part. Reach out to your pain specialist until you find your sweet spot. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.